Hi, this is Frank Kutka, the Dakota Corn Man, with another video about plant breeding from Farm Breeding Club. Today I'm going to talk about plant breeding objectives. When we set out to breed crops, whether beautiful orange squash or orange corn or any of the other plants we might want to grow, it's good to have objectives set. As any good counselor will tell you, having objectives helps you know when and how to get to the things that you want to reach. In plant breeding, what we want to reach are seeds that produce varieties that meet our needs. We want things that mature on time, produce a good valuable crop, a good yield, something we really want to eat, and things that resist all the problems that frequently come with production. To set out these objectives in plant breeding, we need to think about all of these things so we can envision some kind of an ideal type of plant that we're going to eventually get. Now, when we generate new diversity by making crosses in the other steps, what's going to happen is we're going to produce way more diversity than what we're thinking, perhaps. I'm going to show you shortly an example from corn breeding that shows how it is easy to be led astray and to have some amount of mission creep if we don't first set out clear objectives on what it is we're trying to do. One of the parents that I used for this particular crossed population is a flower corn from Montana called Painted Mountain. You can see from the kernels on the right that this population has great diversity for color. Uh, the kernels are all flowery and soft, and the uh, soft ears uh, at the left uh, demonstrate the, the basic ear shape, which is long and mostly eight-rowed. Uh, these, because they're self happen to not have too much color variation, but this does show pretty much what the early parent of the two looks like. The other parent in this wide cross is a very hard, white-grained uh, Tushpeño type from the lowlands of east-central Mexico. Kernels can be seen on the right. Uh, they're fairly good sized, um, very flinty with uh, small, no dents, uh, sometimes a, a little bit of a dent, I suppose. An ear on the, the left there um, isn't actually the original parent, but it greatly resembles it. Uh, a very classic sort of corn belt dent kind of an ear with uh, 12 to 16 rows on uh, white cobs. A very strong and drought tolerant corn from Mexico and very interesting to use in this cross. After making the cross, generating F2 seed, and putting them out for selfing, uh, this is the sort of diversity that showed up. And you can see that the ear types vary from somewhat fat to thin eight rows. Some are a little bit short and some are long. No end of diversity has come along. So if my plant breeding objective was to generate a population that matured over a period of two to three weeks or more and had ears placed at anywhere from six inches above the ground to about two and a half feet above the ground, varied from completely susceptible to fungal diseases to quite resistant to fungal diseases, had both dented and non-dented, flint and flower, and just about every color you could imagine, then my objectives have been met already. And that's fine, if that's where one wants to go. Certainly beautiful colored corn is a nice thing. However, if I'm looking for improvements in the early parent, I'm probably going to look for very early maturing long, thin type ears that can make it in Montana and into the mountains. That's just a subset. Similarly, if I'm looking for a more commercial type, I can pick out those types of ears as well. As long as they meet the maturity and other things and have high enough ear placement, they will certainly uh, fit current commercial operations.
For example, if my objective was to have a hard-grained white corn for the chipping market or for hominy, I have some ears that are all white. And there are kernels on this ear anyway that are all hard. There are some other ears similarly all white and mostly hard. Certainly I can select those. I can select kernels from ears that have white kernels on them but are otherwise yellow or blue or some other colors. For instance, this one here has the Navajo trait, but also some white kernels. So to quickly meet my objective, I have to pick which ears I'm going to use and then probably drop some others because it'll simply take too long to, say, back cross this one more time and uh, get rid of the pink color from it. That means some strong selection, as a matter of fact. So I probably, if I'm just looking for white and I can deal with the maturity variation for now, I'm still probably going to throw out a large number of these ears. Throwing them out from the breeding process does not mean wasting them, as we can still eat them and use them otherwise. But the ones that don't have hard white grain don't help me meet my objective. This is the same as when we make crosses with squash and we get variation in uh, fruit flavor, for instance, or fruit shape. Uh, you just can't save everything, and we don't wish to. We're trying to achieve those objectives. So we find those plants while we're doing this that help us meet those objectives as quickly as possible. And then we just let the others go. So, with any crop we might work with, choose reasonable, useful objectives so that we can come up with something that improves our situation for producing food where it is that we live. Think of very useful traits, bring parents together that will help make those combinations to provide us those traits, and then make the selections. By having good objectives at the start, we can narrow our focus and find our way through the dizzying array of genetic diversity that our crosses will generate, no matter what the crop. That said, if one has the time and finds something especially interesting, don't be afraid to pursue it so long as it also leads to a very useful crop at the end. Quite a few commercial breeders and university breeders have done this with great success. Keep the uh, number of projects small and there's a very good chance that we will achieve whatever it is we want to do with our on-farm breeding project.